Okay, this is going to be a uh, overview and um, description of all the details as far as uh, doing the battle in Hall of the Montezuma. Because um, there are a number of steps you have to take and that uh, when, when it gets to be some larger armies, it uh, uh, can get quite involved when there's a few decisions you have to make with your units, um, which I, I think makes the game quite a bit more interesting than the typical point-to-point um, -point, uh, type of, of uh, war game. Um, one thing I wanted to uh, clarify from the video on movement, um, you can use any card, any ops card, to move a single unit, if there was a unit here, um, you could uh, use any ops card. And then that ops card, uh, um, or I'm sorry, the action card, you'd use the four column uh, if there was only a single unit moving. So obviously, a single unit is just like having a bad general. So. Um, <clears throat> another thing to, to remember with movement is technically uh, a unit or a force or whatever general could move as many times during a turn um, as you've got cards. So um, you can get quite a ways. Um, but just remember that this is over a period of three months time each turn is three months since, since we're talking about four different seasons for the year. So it's not like they're traveling that quickly. Um, <clears throat> think more strategically until you get into the uh, actual battles. Um, we're going to make this into a pretty interesting battle. I, if I were going to uh, move... Um, and we played an ops card and move Leon into uh, the uh, space right here where there is an army, the Tejas, army of Tejas, and Ampadilla. And so Ampadilla is going to, to control, we pretend we already got there and we've got another card and then uh, the army will will uh, include Leon um, with Apadia. And Apadia, when you have an army, you can remember you can control the six for Apadia, and um, then with that army, he's controlling can control one other general, and then Leon can have five units of his own. So, oops, sir, we'll place Leon with Apadia and then the units, we'll have four units with uh, under Leon's uh, square. So we've got an army here. I'm just gonna forget about Arista for now. Um, an army and the baggage train is there. And uh, we're going to attack into this space. And we'll, again, we'll pretend we have um, just going to tighten this up a little bit. We'll pretend we have enough movement points to go in here, which would normally be two. And then uh, we'll pay for the uh, pitch, oops, let's try here. Uh, the pitched attack, which is three more movement points. So we'd need a total of five to get in there and attack using the pitched battle. Okay, so here finally we look at how you go about doing the battle. Um, for right now, I think we'll leave the two armies 
here, they both have baggage trains. I'm not going to worry about that. And we are going to flip over this, and we see a 2, plus 2. So that's going to be an advantage for the U.S. side. So we've got Taylor leading the Army of Observation, and they're being attacked by um, the Army of Tejas. So we're going to go over here and spread these units out. Grab. Grab the U.S. units and see what their options are. Um, <clears throat> okay, I'm going to bring you over with a little bit better angle and take a look at this. You can see we've got three rows, and the lead unit, whoever you put in as a lead unit, um, is going to get their full firepower. So we're just going to say uh, for for the uh, U.S. side, we'll put that three in. Um, because, as you'll see later, the this Dragoon unit cannot be a committed unit. I'll show you why in a second. So we'll put him at their three spot over on the U.S. side. You can see right there, the lead unit side. Okay. Oh. And then the next, um, row it says committed units and these are going to be worth two firepower or I'm sorry two two times their firepower so we'll obviously want to put the largest one we can and you can only use any of these units actually would work uh, because they have this marking right there they'll be blue blue with white stars for the US and the uh, Mexican player will have their flag. Um, so we'll place one of these two army units into their um, the U.S. side of the committed row right there. Now they can only do one because Taylor has only one star, so they can only commit one to that row. And then the rest are simply, um, they count as one firepower each. So the US has four more units, they have four more firepower. So if you take a look at these four count as four, I'll slide over here. top one. I'll flip this around so it's not upside down since they're doing solitaire. And oh, so the top one is worth three. The next one is worth double. That's four more. That's seven. And then each of these are worth one. So they have a total of 11 combat factors. And there are markers over here. And it just simply says, oh, let's see if we can get focused on that. Firepower from units, and then total firepower. So we said, I believe it was 11. So that's firepower from the units itself. And that may change, the overall firepower may change. So we'll put uh, the marker on the 11. Oh, there we go. 11 on the track. This is what you use to
to keep track of points for each side. Then the Mexican player will take you back a little bit. Um, draw them around here. You can see what they have. And then they also have Leon as general and he has these units. So, um, we see Ampodio only has one star, so they're only going to be able to use one committed unit. Now, they have um, a really strong four that they can use as committed, so we'll put that in that second row, and then take the next strongest and um, put it... Um, it's not going to matter. Uh, the two is going to be the the next one right there. Um, and then all the other units are going to count as one point each. Doesn't matter what their factor is. Half, zero, two, whatever. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven point. Oops, eight points there. We've got a four that's doubled. So that's 16. And then two for the lead unit, that's 18. So let's put the Mexican firepower from units on the 18. So right now it's 18 to 11. And then you take a look. Um, The Mexican player can play uh, or add a gorilla from hiding on play of a card, but um, I don't have one, so you can't play a gorilla. Um, we make an efficiency die roll. First, we're going to um, check the uh, firepower from that that's going to be uh, affected here. So. Um, both sides, double value community, we did that. Each additional unit, we did that. Um, combined arms, that's all three, infantry, cavalry, and artillery. Um, both sides do have all three of those units, so they get plus one. So now we're at 19 and uh, I believe 12 for the U.S., um, plus three for army. They both have armies, so there's three more. Okay. Um, minus the unit force is out of supply at the moment battle. Uh, neither one of them are. They're both in supply. Uh, are there any battle cards? The attacker can go first. Well, um... Mexican player has a def defense one. That's not going to help since they're attacking. Um, that's all they have. Um, the U.S. has a local militia. That's not going to help. It has to be in Mexico. Actually, that's that's a Mexican <laughs> advantage anyway. Um, okay, this is a great one. U.S. has this low ammo card, and that just simply says have rounding up the firepower of the enemy units only during the current battle. Firepower from other sources unaffected. So I should have played that um, before. So if you remember right, um, that's why this is this is good to place this. I originally had eighteen from. From, uh, this is going to make a big difference. Um, so instead I started with 9, and I've increased it 4 points so far. So actually the Mexican player starts here, 1, 2, 3, 4. So now they're actually at 13, because the, the combat factors are only worth 9. Um, because of that low ammo, that's pretty devastating. 
Um, okay. Then the field command, we don't have any um, generals like this that the US has um, to play. So don't worry about that. If you did have one, you could use that for your advantage. Um, the attacker already took care of the pitched attack, so they don't subtract any from their firepower. Defender, did the attacker cross a river? Well, yes, actually they did. They did a river crossing, so they get plus two on their firepower. So now the uh, US is at 17. Um, space is a mountain or jungle, no, field work is a fort. Fort, yes, so that's another plus two. Now the US is at 19. Um, Zapadoras don't, that's only for defense, if they're in a fortification, here in fortress, oh, okay. Um, oh, sorry. I do have Zapatoris, type of an engineer unit. And so actually, I cancel the field works. So let's go back to, so now they're at 17. All right, then we do an efficiency die roll. And that's simply, um, you're looking, this is the, the number of firepower you ended up with. U.S. right now is at 17. The Mexican player is at 13. And then you'll roll um, to find out how many um, losses they're going to inflict. So there are, there are some um, changes to that roll that you can add. So when I roll the dice, the die, tactical rating in the force, any one tactical rating. So it could be, it doesn't have to be the lead general. Um, I have Leon as a zero and Ampudi as a zero. So the Mexicans don't get anything. Um, I forget, where did, oh, Taylor, Taylor also is a zero. So there's no tactical rating that's going to affect. Force successful, successfully intercepted this battle? No. Force is an army plus one. So both of the um, both of the uh, sides will add one to their die roll because of the army. Um, and that is it. So here we go. Let's do the you. Uh, let's do the attacker first. They have 13. They add one to the die roll. They get a six, which is decent. Plus one is seven. And you simply go, there's a seven. And, oops, sorry. <laughs> there are 13 um, firepower total. And then they go down to the seven roll that you see here. And that means they inflict four steps on, on uh, the U.S. And then roll for the U.S. is a three, unfortunately. They add one, so that's four. They have 17. And they rolled a four, so they got three. So uh, the Mexican player will will lose three steps and the U.S. will lose four. Um, <clears throat> there was no natural roll of two or seven, so we don't worry about that. Um, notice that no unit may be eliminated until all units have taken a step loss. Now, one thing you have to watch out for, this is why committing a unit does give you that extra firepower but any committed unit will always suffer a step loss first. So they don't count for these losses in the actual battle, battle roll, the efficiency roll. So in this case, this unit is going to be flipped 
before you do anything else. Um, and the same for that infantry unit here. So I'll flip that. So they've lost one before they even do the loss steps. So then the uh, US loses four. So we'll go one, two, three, and four. Actually, I, I know it's, I'm going to go four here because I only lose one there anyway. This is a better unit overall right here. Okay, so they've taken care of their losses. The Mexican player loses three steps. They've already lost one there for the committed unit, and they have to lose three other ones. So one, um, two, three. Oops, actually, let's do this militia cavalry. Okay, and that's it for losses. And then uh, the big thing is uh, whoever lost more steps is the loser. Uh, it, if, you, if you've tied, it goes to the defender. Um, but even though there was only one step more loss for the U.S. side, they're considered the losing side. There's no multiple battles. You simply retreat. And um, they will take over that spot. And along with the army, did I put the army in there? I think they're buried in here. Yeah, took them with them. So, and Taylor's here. I won't bother putting all the units back right now, but that's, that's how that works. And the important thing is now, <clears throat> There are uh, PW political will uh, implications. So let's pull back and look at this sheet. Um, <clears throat> if you see a question mark, con con to conquer PW space, or Alta California, no, I didn't do that. Um, per event card, okay, win a battle when the enemy has five or more units engaged. So I get one political will point in the Mexicans' favor here. Let's take these off. Okay, so political will went up because of that. Then you have win a battle with an army. They also did that. That's another one win a battle if the enemy forces an army. They did that. That's three. Um, Santa Ana loses a battle. No. U.S. loses a battle on Texas space if the U.S. force contains five or more units. Yep. There's one more. Uh, enemy star leader killed. Capture enemy big train. They didn't do that because they got to retreat with their units. Um, so the there's a lot of political will implications on large battles like that. Um, in this case, the Mexican player gained three just for winning that one battle. Um, so it, <clears throat> it gives you a good idea of, of some of the things you need to be thinking about, need to be doing as far as getting that political will in your favor. Um, you do have to be careful though. That was fortunate for the Mexican player. Uh, again, they, even though they ended up having half the firepower because of that card played, the die roll, um, because they had and still ended up having 13 in their um, 13 combat factors. They still did some damage and managed to get one more step loss on the defender. Now, note what it would have happened if it stayed at, let's see if it would have been, oh, 
what was it, 8, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I mean, somewhere in, in this range, in this range, at 21 combat factors and the same die roll, it would have been seven step losses instead of four. So that 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 can with the large armies can really do some damage um, if you get a decent roll. Um, but again, you could have a lot of factors, a lot of firepower, and get two losses on the enemy. It could be twenty one. Let's say it was twenty one to eleven. If they rolled a two or less, it's two. If they rolled a ten or more. Oh, over here, that's a seven loss. So you can get outnumbered and still come out of it. Um, in a try to focus, and come out of it in, in a pretty good way. So it, it could have easily gone the other way, where the U.S. had won that battle. They would have won against an army. They would have won with an army. They would have won with uh, five or more units on a side. Etc. And so instead of political will being at 32, you would have seen political will being all the way down to like 26, I think it would, would have been. So that's all the steps uh, for a battle. I tried to do a larger battle so you could see what that involved. Um, obviously with uh, fewer units and a s smaller number of combat factors, it's not quite as complicated, but they're always interesting, and that's another thing I like about this game. Uh, so, hope that helps. Hope it wasn't too convoluted, but um, I think if you follow step by step, you should get the hang of it. We'll um, continue with one more video, I think, to finish up this series. Catch you later.